What is a dynamite technique right now in the middle of March with a Jimmy Houston legend spinner bait? Good morning, guys and girls. March 19, March 19. It's cold out here. Proverbs 22, 1. I'm reading from a Catch a Better Life book. Uh, Catch a Better Life is a book that I wrote. We have had this book out about a year, uh, and uh, lots and lots and lots of copies have been sold. Uh, you can get this book just about anywhere books are sold. Books a Million, Barnes & Nobles, Hobby Lobby, Bass Pro Shop, Cabela's. You can order them from Amazon. You can get them from JimmyHouston.com. If you want this book signed and autographed, if you got a copy, send it to us. Tell us who you want it signed and autographed to, and we'll do that. Or if you buy it from JimmyHouston.com, be sure in your order to specify that you'd like that book autographed and maybe you'd like it personalized to someone. I'll be happy to do that for you. It's got a scripture for every single day, a fishing tip for every single day, and a devotional built around fishing. March 19, the scripture is from Proverbs 22.1, and it says, A good name, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. God is telling us that our name, our name, our name, a good name, is better than being rich. Better than being rich. Let's see what I wrote about that. My buddy Wally Marshall, Mr. Crappie, is the best I know at naming fishing lures. I mean, he's just got a talent for naming fishing lures. Crappie Thunder, Slab Daddy, Slablicious, and many, many other crazy and great names for, for, for fishing lures. I named the Turbo Tail myself, which was a huge seller, tremendous fish catcher. Of course, names don't catch fish. <laughs> names don't catch fish. The fish don't have any money. Catchy names catch fishermen. That's right. Catchy names catch fishermen. The writer of Proverbs said a good name is about the most important thing that you can own. Better than riches, he says. About the most important thing you can own. He emphasized that it's better than great riches. How do we get a good name anyway? How do we get a good name? Well, we can start with God's Ten Commandments. That's a good way to start. Obeying those, no lying, no cheating, no coveting, no adultery, no stealing, no killing, so forth. You know them all. You've heard the Ten Commandments many times. We might want to also, while we're at it, in our everyday life, cut out hatred, cut out jealousy, envy, drunkenness, and so forth. We start doing all of those things, obeying the Ten Commandments and cutting out some of those things I just mentioned, now, our name's going to get a lot better. We can develop, we can establish a good name. Can we do all this? Can we do all this? Can we obey the Ten Commandments? And can we cut out jealousy and hatred and infinite, uh, envy and drunkenness and all that kind of stuff? Sure we can. We can do that once God puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. Once we get the Holy Spirit, once we get the Holy Spirit, we can do that. We can establish for ourselves a good name. Some of us have a good name because we got it from our dad, our granddad, our great-grandfather. We were taught from childhood how important our name was, basically our last name. But we add our first name to that, too. But that was a family name. We were taught to respect and revere and not hurt that family name. Many people were not. Many people don't have that kind of upbringing where they were taught that their family name is important. It's not only important to you, it's your name. It's important to your mom and dad, your brothers and your sisters, your aunts, your uncles, your grandma, granddad, your cousins. And everybody's got an investment in that last family name. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Once we have God's Holy Spirit in us, if we don't have a good family name, we can be the ones to start a good family name. Today, let's go about making our name even better than it is. Let's make our name even better than it is and make sure that our children, our grandchildren, can have a family name that they respect, they honor, and they want to make better as well. Here's our tip for today, and it's a great one. Everybody got this right. What do you do with a half-ounce spinnerbait? You slow roll it this time of the year. Slow rolling a half-ounce Jimmy Houston Legend spinnerbait in 8 to 12 foot of water. There's the key right there. 8 to 12 feet of water is dynamite right now. One of the reasons, there are a lot of fish up shallow. We can catch a lot of fish. We can catch a lot of fish on a, a red man spinnerbait buzzing it right on top of the water. But the big girls, the big fat ones, the PBs, the best fish that we've ever caught in our life, the five, six, seven, eight, nine pounders, they're out in eight to 12 foot of water. Now they'd be moving up shallow pretty doggone quick. These cold nights, 
These cold nights have actually cooled the water off in most places in the South. Definitely happened here in Oklahoma. The cold nights, like last night, have cooled the water off. It's not getting warm enough in the day. It's getting pretty cold at night, and that, that water temperature go up during the day, fall down at night. And it, where it was getting up here and getting up here and getting up here, 58, 59 degrees, all of a sudden it's 56, 55. That makes a huge difference in your fishing. Guys and girls, go out there and have your great one today. And remember, I sure do love you.